hybrid themselves with down and seal the tanks uh, or dispose of them otherwise. I tried. Uh, I still have a call in for Reeves. I haven't been able to get him this morning. I wanted to find out about the general conditions in the area as a result of the hurricane and to determine whether I should be down there this morning. And the National Command Center is searching for Reeves, but hasn't found him yet. What uh, do any of the men on the scene or any of the folks in the Navy give you any of their judgments about the uh, uh, the real dangers in here? here? No, I, I, we don't have a good judgment on that. I just talked to the Admiral in charge of the command center and told him to track down the the uh, technical people in the company that owns the barge. It's a Pittsburgh Plate Glass Company barge, as we understand it. And we haven't yet gotten in touch with the technical directors of the Pittsburgh Plate to find out exactly the condition of these tanks or the degree to which the chlorine may seep out. But we are developing a plan to deal with it if it does. Is there any uh, thought being given to what uh, uh, already said to the people or uh, uh, whether when and if uh, any uh, precautions should be yes. taken? Yes. Gas yes. mask or anything yes. else? Yes, I have uh, uh, Phil Goulding, who's our public affairs officer under Sylvester, working on the public affairs aspect of it. Last night they had to put out a notice to mariners indicating that uh, a dangerous object had been had broken loose, and that was done. And, and a low-key announcement made of it, and I don't think there's been any serious problem as a result. As to the precautions to be taken with the populace, that is being uh, developed. And I think there's an adequate plan for it. What do you think that'll encompass? Well, they, it depends where this thing happens. Uh, the danger doesn't appear too great at the moment. Uh, if, if it were near a populated area, it could be very serious. It doesn't appear to be. But we don't really know, do we? Well, we don't really know, but it, it doesn't appear to be at, at present. Well, how does it appear at all? Do you mean the last they saw of it was uh, between Baton Rouge and, and New Orleans or something, yes, and, and, and not, that's not a populated area? Yes, and, and the point, it, 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 uh, if it sank at this particular point in the bend in the river, yes, it, well. it's not a, it's not mm -hmm. so near a populated area to, to cause it. And what is it to, to indicate that it might have sunk there because that's where it would probably get hung? Yes, that's the point. Now, I, I think I'm just giving you surmises because nobody knows. Uh, but we've got every search device that we possibly can. I guess we have to put in all the aircraft that, that anyone conceivably could have could have required, and and uh, and that they did. As a matter of fact, they turned back some of our aircraft. They said the condition of the fields is such that they don't want any more aircraft down there. And then the sonar devices that we're using both in the airborne and the seaborne craft are are the maximum number required. I don't think there's anything more we can do to, to find the damn thing. I think there is more we can do, Mr. President, to, to determine how to deal with it uh, if this chlorine breaks loose. And the last conversation I had, which was about half an hour ago, was, uh, our people was directed to that end. The Coast Guard is actually in charge of the preparations for dealing with it and the preparations for handling the people. But I told our people to assume we were responsible for it and go ahead and develop the necessary plans. Okay, it looks like Pittsburgh ought to be getting high behind. Well, that's right, but we, best of my knowledge, we haven't talked to Pittsburgh, and this is exactly what I asked them to do, is get in touch with them. It was then that I tried to call General Reeves, but I haven't yet gotten hold of him. I'll tell yeah. Pittsburgh have a nice end of a very profitable, long-time relationship with a few suits there, wouldn't they? Absolutely. <laughs> a tremendous liability here, yeah. of course. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think about the India? Pakistan. Well, I, I'm pleased that it hasn't erupted <coughs> to a higher level of military action than it has. I, I don't really know how it's getting along. Our intelligence is, and I don't mean CIA necessarily, I mean the information we get through our military source and our diplomatic is really not very good. And I don't know exactly how the battle is going. What, what little information I do have on it indicates to me the Pakistan are ahead at this point. Yes, that, that's the way it appears. And my own impression of the relative military strengths of the two countries is that the PACs could, could uh, continue to, to achieve military advantage for a period of, I'd just guess offhand, four weeks. And then at the end of that period, I would think that the, the 
total strength of the Indians in terms of men and equipment, which is roughly four times out of the packs, would begin to be felt. And then by the end of, say, 12 weeks, uh, if the conflict continues that long, I would expect the Indians to reverse the trend and then be in a militarily advantageous position. What about the Chinese? That's a $64. We don't have any real evidence, and I think we would have if there had been substantial moves. We don't have any real evidence that they're building up strength on that, on that uh, Northeast Frontier Agency border. And we've been very anxious to get more intelligence. We've worked out a plan to do it with some U-2s. Uh, and I think this will give us advance notice of any movement of, of men or equipment up there. And there just has to be some movement before they can effectively uh, intervene. They can intervene uh, with a few advanced days of preparation on their part. And I think they could just clean up that area and push the, push the Indians out if they chose to do so. I doubt, I rather doubt they'll choose to do it. It's very dangerous for them to do so. My own view is that it almost certainly involves uh, Western support to India, which China would like to avoid. The great danger here, it seems to me, is the, the, uh, the uh, dis uh, weakening, if not destruction, of the Indian political uh, institutions as a result of this. I bet, uh, I bet they got a new government for very long. Well, it's like, yes, and if it's just, a, if it's a new government yeah. that uh, is just uh, stepping in and place of Shastri is pretty weak anyhow, that may not be too bad, but if, it, if it's a fraction or fragmenting of that country, I think it'd be very serious over the long run. You mean a minute return? Yeah, on? that and, or if some of those states that want to break away from, from the Indian uh, government do so, and you, you just get that, that huge mass of discordant people splitting up into smaller states, uh, then I think two decades or a decade from now, uh, there's no effective barrier to the Chinese in the area. What do you think about our continuing to uh, send in uh, economic help and food to both of them while they're fighting? Well, I put it off a little while, Mr. President. I think you're going to have to send the food uh, a week from now or two weeks from now, but you don't have to do it today. I, I just don't see how you can avoid sending food to, to uh, really starving people. Well, it's just, uh, you know, damn well, Napoleon says army runs on its belly, and you know that they're going to go right to the army. The people are not going no, to get to the... No, oh, no, I don't think so. The food's going to the army anyhow. Yeah, and there's not going to be any food shortage in the army, whether you send food or not. I, but on the food, I, as I say, I kick that one ahead of me. You don't have to decide it today. You probably don't even have to decide it a week from today. Can you tell me this advisory board of the agencies coming in to meet and going to be raising hell if they don't do something? Be attacking us for it, doesn't it? You mean of the aid agency? No, they, we got a kind of a front, hypocritical operation. We say that we give the food to the private agencies. Oh, the private yeah, agencies yeah, distributed. Yeah. And uh, they'll have a series of picketing or something, I guess. Kind of like the professors, the who's, private agencies. Who's in charge of that in the private agencies? I, I don't know. they got an advisory board. I wonder if we couldn't next. just get it postponed. They meet next week, a private agency. I'll look into it today. I saw a memo on my desk last night about it. Well, I, uh, that's the kind of thing I would think we really could control for a week or two. Uh, what do you think about Vietnam? Well, uh, in the... In the in the short run, we've, we've done reasonably well, I think, Mr. President. We've stopped these large Viet Cong uh, operations, the, the uh, disruption of transportation in the country, the isolation of the district towns and provincial capitals, the, the uh, pressure on the economy that was leading to inflation has all been, been stopped, I think. Uh, and we're sort of in a stalemate position at the moment. I, I think the danger is that, that uh, our forces, effective there in the sense of preventing any large Viet Cong operations, may not be effective in dealing with these very small harassing and ambushing and terror operations, and that perhaps neither may the uh, South Vietnamese forces be effective in that action. So yesterday afternoon, Mac and, and uh, Dean and I met, and, and I think we agreed that we'll get a cable out to, to uh, or a draft cable for you to see before it goes to lodge, uh, either tomorrow or the next day, that will uh, say to them, in effect, now we've 
taking care of this first phase of military action. What are the plans to get back onto the pacification program? Where are you going to try it? Are you going back into that hop tack area, which is the area around Saigon? And if so, how many troops are required, South Vietnamese troops, and are they there? And do we have people to work on the police uh, reorganization and the political developments that are necessary to extend the government control over that area? And if, if we aren't ready for it, how the hell are we ever going to win this war? Because you can't win it with American troops going out after Viet Cong terrorists. It just isn't going to be done that way. But I, I'm, I'm encouraged by the results of the last six to eight weeks. I think it proved that, that our military deployments were correct and proper and effective. But it doesn't prove that two months from now we'll be any better off than we are today unless we get this pacification effort working. When do we meet again on more troops? Oh, well, I think that uh, the additional uh, support troops uh, and the additional air squadrons required, which were part of that 210,000, as opposed to, to more Army battalions, uh, we'll have to meet on the, the former within the next week. The additional Army battalions above 34 U.S. battalions, I don't think we'll have to meet on for a couple of months, probably. But I talked to... Uh, How many will the first phase cover total? Uh, when we complete. It looks to be about 210,000. You've authorized 175. We've been uh, uh, dribbling out the authorizations within the limit of 175 day by day, and up to yesterday we were up to a total of 171,000, and they had in requests for another five or six, and, uh, and a couple of them we turned down, and we had a request for four air squadrons, and I think it was for a total of about 4,000 which would take us just over the 175,000. And so uh, we'll have to come back within a week and review this all with you. And the, the thing that's holding us back is that we, we are insisting we get a good analysis of why it's 210 instead of 175, which we told you in June. Uh, are we losing more planes than you think we ought to be losing? No, no. The, the loss rate is, is, uh, is very low. President, uh, uh, that's true both in, in uh, South Vietnam and North Vietnam. No, I, I'm not at all concerned about the aircraft losses. I am concerned about the future of the bombing program. The Chiefs came in yesterday afternoon with a recommendation for this next week's Rolling Thunder program that we will be talking about Monday or Tuesday that just uh, bombs the hell out of North Vietnam. And I sent it back to them. wasn't going to accept it. We haven't done the work that, that I think we should do to even be considering such a, a move. But this just shows the kind of pressure that's building up, and I think very irrationally. We talked to Buzz Wheeler about it yesterday, and he, he isn't strongly in favor of many aspects of it. I think he wants to go further in the bombing than I do, for example, but he's not uh, prepared to press for bombing Phuket Airfield or the other airfield or taking out all the SAMs or doing something. Did you see the poll this morning on Vietnam? No, I haven't seen it yet. On page two, it's very interesting. Of the Times or the Post? Uh, the Post. Yeah, I've got it right it here. It shows that uh, uh, we've gone up uh, in the last uh, immediate past, I guess two months, I believe, in July to September. And uh, also, the boys that uh, all our bombers go up. Yeah. They're at the bottom of the list. I believe the pullouters are. Oh, yeah, I see. But it didn't, but they didn't go up much. They went from. 22 to 26, May to September, or 25 to 26, July to September. We went up one the last. Yeah, that's period. right. That's right. We went up four or five. Then. That's right. Yeah, four. So I, I think your policies, if anything, are gaining strength, but they are very, the strength is very thin. I know that. And, and uh, we had a group of businessmen in here this on Friday and Saturday that Cy si and I met with our advisory council. George Brown was one of them, for example. And, uh, and you could tell from them the support was thin. What advice to give you? Oh, the, it, frankly, uh, we don't. It isn't to have, get advice from them. We have minutes for us to, to give them the feeling we know what we're doing. You know what you're doing, and that it's all in the interest of business. And I think we got that point across. They were ecstatic when they left. They ought to be. We spent a hell of a lot of time with them. We've been neglecting them. We, we meet once a quarter with them, and, and we've been so terribly busy that, frankly, I hadn't done all I should have done in uh, 
holding your hand, and this time I really did, and so I did, and uh, they left feeling very good. We can get this Congress out of here now. We, we've had we've uh, we've had an awful, unbelievably good year. I know it. Terrific. We can just get them out of here now. The American Motor Strike settled. Uh, what what other, what other strike we got? We got a railroad or two. And,